Hey everybody, today we're gonna to take a look at installing some Leviton quick port network jacks. Um, we've got a, a few pieces here. We're gonna be installing two uh, Cat6 jacks into a home office. Um, so I've got a few other videos that show pulling cable and things like that, but what I realized is I don't have a video showing how to actually terminate the ports in detail. Um, so in this home office, we're gonna add two Cat6 jacks. Um, I've got a, a nice little Decora plate that's gonna go over that. And then here in the wall is where we're coming out. So um, there's a piece of coax cable that was there from an existing install. We're just gonna tuck that right back into the wall. Um, but here are our two Cat6 cables and uh, we're just gonna show in detail how to terminate those and how to uh, do it into the Leviton quick port. So here we go. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is, um, I left a bit of a service loop on this when I pulled it through the wall, so we just need to cut that down. Um, so for the, um, for the sake of, of neatness, what I ended up doing was I just made some, some heat shrink labels. Um, so I'm just gonna label these so that we can keep them, uh, we can keep them separated. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're looking at J and I. So let's H I J. <laughs> I had to do the alphabet there. So uh, we're just going to cut this down to about here. Um, so in an electrical world, you need to have a six inch. You need to have a six inch piece that comes out of the wall for for code. Uh, network world, it doesn't really matter, but obviously you want to leave yourself a bit of a service loop so that if you have to pull it out, so we're just going to slide our heat shrink label over that so that if we have to pull it out of the wall for troubleshooting, it will say patch 13 in a nice way. Just hide that there for a second. Um, so we want to start by stripping the cable. So we'll pop off, you know, usually do about a two knuckler if you count the first knuckle as a knuckler if anybody catches my over letter Kenny reference there um, so we're just gonna flip out the pairs and pull this all out so cat six has this little plastic piece um, you just want to grab a, a set of flush cutters and cut that off now one of the things that you want to be careful about is uh, when you cut here, you wanna cut low enough, but you don't wanna cut too low where you nick the tops of the cables. Because if you do that, you have to start again and because you could have crosstalk. So they have this little uh, separator piece of whatever the heck kind of fabric that is. Um, so if you grab your fingernail, I always like to keep a long thumbnail if I can because it helps me separate out uh, cables of varieties of types. But um, what I like to do is just pinch the, the pairs between my uh, thumb and my index finger and um, straighten them out as best you can. That'll help you for terminating them. Um, so one of the things with Cat5 versus Cat6 Think that's a question that a lot of people have what's the difference between cat 5 and cat 6 well beyond any type of speed uh, let's talk about construction um, so cat 6 cable oftentimes not all the time but oftentimes will have a thicker outer jacket but one thing that it always has is that little plastic um, what looks like a plus sign separator, but separating all of the um, eight conductors into banks of two. Uh, the other thing that it'll do is it twists the pairs a lot tighter than Cat5. So Cat6 cable can be a little trickier, a little bit more tricky, trickier, a little bit more tricky, say that three times fast, uh, to build than a Cat5 cable. Cat5 cables are always easier to make. Um, Okay, so I'm just pulling out my first keystone jack and I'm realizing that it doesn't have a top plate and my second one doesn't either, so, okay. Um, so here's what we've got. This is our, our Leviton uh, quick port jack. Um, so it gives you 
it gives you the A standard for wiring this on the side, but the whole house is the B standard. So to terminate the cable, um, I have the Leviton quick port tool. Um, I, you can certainly do it without it. It just makes life a little easier if, if you have it. So um, on each of the Keystone jacks, it has the color code for the A standard. So my house is wired with B. So it is imperative that we follow the B standard and ignore the stickers, which would will be a bit hard to do. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip our tool over and we're just gonna stick the little tab um, in the top of the top of the keystone jack into the quick port tool. And they and it just holds it there for you. Um, now, one of the cool things that the quick port does, is, or the quick port tool does, is it gives you the B standard right here. So, although there's A on the jack, there is B on the tool, so it tells you how to wire everything, which is nice and helpful. Um, so, one of the other things that this thing does is it has a little cable holder in there. So, when you're doing this, you can you can just clip it onto the cable like this. Of course, now that we're filming, it's going to be more problems than it's worth. Well. On a thinner cable, you can do it. So um, the tool that you're going to need is a punch down tool like this to terminate that. Um, so what I like to do is get everything sort of lined up like this. Try to do this so that you can actually see it. And I start from the bottom up. So let's start on the left-hand side. That's going to be, I'm looking directly at the light. I just want to make sure that these colors are right because blue and green look very similar on this. So we're going to start with blue. Just tuck that in there like that. Green. Just tuck that in there. Brown. brown, white, or as I like to call it, brown stripe. Okay, and then on the other side, we are gonna start with blue, white. Green, white. Orange, white. Okay. And orange. Now, where the punch, where the the quick port tool really shines is at this point right here. It's ergonomically designed, and then you can just take your punch tool and terminate this easily. So you don't have to go crazy with the punch. You just need to pierce the cable. Always want to spin when you go to the other side so that the blade is on the outside around the outside, around the outside. Okay, and there we go. So if I had a bit more leverage, some of them are gonna break off, some of them aren't. Well, I guess they're all behaving today. And then if they don't want to break off, you can just grab your flush cutters and take them right off. So this is terminated. So um, we're going to do the other one real quick. Okay, so now that we've got these terminated with our keystones and we've got our labels on there, uh, we're going to take just a regular uh, network checker um, and we're gonna go downstairs in the basement and check this. So uh, the first thing we're gonna do is start with patch 13. So I'll just put a Cat5 cable in there, hook this up to our other end of our cable checker, and we're gonna go downstairs in the basement and check this out. Okay, so we're downstairs at the basement rack. Let's open this up and see what we got going on. So all of the bedrooms in the house are 
first terminated at this patch bay, and then they go into the network switch or in various other places. Um, so on this install, I tried to have everything labeled. So I made all of my own patch cables, which in previous videos I kind of got a little bit of flack about, but um, on the same token, I like that everything is completely neat and, and made for it. And then also I can put my heat shrink labels on there so that I, for a troubleshooting standpoint, I can know where everything is. Um, and, and then also the neatness. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna patch into our panel and see if our cable works. Okay, so one of the things that I like to do is keep patch cables in the rack. And I even have a little label on there that says cable stays in rack because nerd. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just patch into 13 right here and then put the other end of this in my cable tester, run a test, and we are good to go. Okay, so now that we've got everything tested, let's get this, um, the, the quick port jack loaded up. So there is a top and a bottom to this. Uh, you wanna look for, first of all, you can see the writing on it, it says Leviton, so that's gonna be your top. Now in this, there's a little trough in here. Now the trough is the bottom part and then there's a slightly, there's just a little knockout on the top. So what you want to do is um, on each of these jacks it says up. So you want to start with the bottom and you want to get it deeper than you think in there. And see how there's this little flange right here? You want to line it up so that the, right where my thumb is pointing it, it will click in. So once you get your bottom in it'll just snap right in, just like that. These can be a little tricky if you're not used to them. So again, we'll just stick our bottom portion in. So again, just stick our bottom portion in like that and just snap it in. So there's patch 13 and 14. So we're just gonna shove this little piece of coax back down in the wall. We haven't had cable in this house in a long time, so. And then to just to get that mounted up, each one of these little quick port pieces comes with screws and a little baggie. So we'll get that installed. Okay, everybody, so this is the jack installed. Um, Thanks for stopping by. If anybody has any questions, please just drop a comment below. And uh, we hope to see you soon in another video. Thanks so much. Have a great day.